Welcome to Understanding Soccer in Europe in Four Simple Steps, a guide for Americans. Although from the outside it may seem complex and confusing, to understand how soccer works in Europe, you really only need to know four things. Number one, each country has its own soccer league. Seasons run from August to May, in which each team plays every other team twice, once at home and once on the road. Games are divided into two 45-minute halves, and when the game is over, the winner is awarded three points, the loser zero, and in the event of a tie, each team gets one point. After each team has played all the other teams twice, the team with the most points is crowned champion of the league. They get a big trophy, a parade, and the season is over. There are no playoffs. Sort of. But more on that in a minute. Before the books are closed on the season, there is still one small bit of housekeeping to be done. Number two, relegation. We'll use the German league as an example. Every year, when the German league has concluded and the champion has been crowned, the three teams with the least amount of points are kicked out of the league. This process is known as relegation. The three vacant spots are subsequently filled by the top three teams from Germany's second division. And unlike, say, baseball in the U.S., teams in the second and subsequent divisions are not owned by teams in the top division. Imagine if the Pittsburgh Pirates or Oakland Raiders had to fight at the end of each season just to stay in the league. What if instead of coasting to the bottom for better draft picks, they were fighting to the bitter end to avoid the $40 million revenue loss that relegated teams suffer in the first year alone? Not to mention the fact that in England, nine different teams have gone financially insolvent within five years of relegation. Okay, interesting enough, you're thinking. But what about that whole lack of playoffs part? Number three, each country also holds an elimination style tournament referred to as a cup. But instead of being held after the nine month league is over, cup games are scheduled in between league games, normally in the middle of the week. One additional perk about the cup system is that teams from all levels, down to semi-professional and even some amateur teams, are invited to play, and if they do well, can progress, and occasionally even knock off a top team. So every year, these midweek elimination games continue until there are only two teams left, who play each other in the cup final. After 90 minutes, a cup champion is crowned, they get a trophy, and a parade. So, between the league and cup games, we get a great picture of who the best and worst teams in each country are. But wait a second, you ask? What would happen if the best teams from each country in Europe all got together and played each other? Good idea. Number four. The resulting competition is called the UEFA Champions League, and it is without a doubt the single greatest club competition of any sport anywhere in the world, period. Think of the NCAA tournament, but with better quality of play, more than double the fan base, and quadruple the enthusiasm. And yes, Europe even has their own version of the NIT as well. So, through a complex and drawn out process, teams from all over Europe compete just to qualify for this tournament. And starting each September, the top 32 teams are put into eight groups of four. Each team plays the other members of its group two times, once at home and once on the road. Come December, the winner and runner-up from each group move on to the knockout round. And this is where club soccer is at its finest. Teams are paired up individually and again play one home and one away game, with the winner from each pair moving on to the next round until only two teams remain. The Champions League final is then held as a single game each year in May. And unless it's the World Cup year, this is the most important soccer game of the year. After 90 minutes, a champion is crowned, the trophy is awarded, parades commence, and all clubs go on break until the madness fires back up again in August. So, to review. Number one, each country has its own league. Number two, the worst teams are kicked out of the league and replaced by the best teams from the next division down. Number three, throughout the year, each country also holds a playoff-type tournament called a cup. And number four, the UEFA Champions League is a tournament involving all of Europe and is the most important competition in all of club soccer.